What is up YouTube? Today we are going to be going over everything that's new in the color tab in DaVinci Resolve 17. But first, if you guys are new here, my name is Sam Aldrich, AKA Sam the Cameraman, and we are making tutorials each and every week. So make sure you subscribe if you're not, hit that bell notification, and also go check me out on Instagram because I put a lot of cool BTS stuff from music videos and on the light road touring and different concert photos and a bunch of cool content there. So make sure you guys go check me out at Sam underscore the cameraman. But anyways, let's get into this tutorial. We're gonna be going over all the new features in the color tab. And if you haven't seen my last video I did, we went over the magic mask. Now that is in the color tab and we're gonna kind of brush on it again today, but I will link that video somewhere up here on the cards. Go check that out if you want a really in-depth view on the magic mask. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get into DaVinci Resolve 17 and let's check out these dope new features. All right guys, so we are back here in DaVinci Resolve going over what is new slash what I like most about the color tab. So as you can see, I got this video I uh, shot earlier this year out on the road, pretty cool. And uh, now that we have it in the timeline, let's just go right into the color tab down here. And the way I'm gonna show you guys this is I'm just gonna break it down and do a really quick color grade and show you how each new tool works and how it can be applied to a practical color grade. So starting off up here in the node tree on the right, let's just create some nodes. So by holding Alt S, we're gonna create a handful. This is how I break it down right away. And we can label them if you want. For me, the shortcut I made R, and we're gonna name this one noise reduction. This one is going to be exposure. This one will be color slash balance this one will be we'll call this the look and that's where we'll mess with the hdr tools but we'll get into that in a second this one will be we'll just say color warp and this one will be let's do a vignette and we'll add in as we need there so First things first, we'll go under the exposure node and we're gonna add in just a little bit of contrast. This was shot on a Sony A7R3, so we're not gonna get too crazy. We're gonna bring in, you know, bring down the lift. Let's bring up the gamma and we'll bring down the gain a little bit, bring up the gamma, open this image up just a little bit more and we'll bring down the lift a whole bunch more just right about there all right i'm happy with the exposure of this clip overall it looks pretty good let's go to color and balance being that this is shot on a sony a7r3 i'm pretty sure i shot this in cine 4 uh it's 8 bits not like it has a ton of information so we're going to just use the temp in tint to control this i want to make it a little bit cooler and let's make it a little bit more magenta just a little bit and right there that white balance looks pretty good overall as we can see in our scope down here everything looks pretty even everything looks pretty true to white visually so i think we're good there now let's go into the look and this is where we will get into some of these new tools let's start with the hdr so these hdr wheels are absolutely incredible i i love them and uh, they're completely game changing. So as you can see on the bottom, we have our temp, our tint, hue, contrast pivot, and everything else down here. So what we can do is we have dark, shadows, light, and your global adjustment. If you look here up, we have like all these other circles we can click on. If we go over to the left, we have blacks. And if we go over to the right, we have highlight and speculars. So we can literally control every aspect of this image. So let's just start with the blacks. In order to see like what this is going to affect, we can click these little circles right up here, and that's what blacks are gonna affect. 
So if we wanted to crank that exposure way up, as we can see, if you look down here in the lower right, it is, or right in the middle here, it is just completely falling apart and we don't want that. So if you wanted to crank it all the way down, you could do that as well. But we're gonna just reset that. We don't really need to mess with the blacks at all. If we go to the darks and click this, this is what is all being affected. So now if we really wanted to, we could increase the exposure, open that up, we could bring it down. Let's bring it down and see what happens. And you know, I don't really think we need to mess with the darks. I might just open them up a little bit and we can also add in different colors into these different sections of the image. So if we wanted to add some blues, we could add some blues, some oranges. I mean, this is really dramatic. Obviously you wouldn't add that much, but if you wanna just bring in just a little bit of blue and let's open it up just a little bit more. All right, so this red meter here or this red indicator, it controls your fall off. Now this is where these get super, super awesome. So we can control how much of like the blacks or the darks affect uh, the blacks or into the highlights or the shadows or the midtones. So you can use this to control that. Or if you go over here to the zones graph, as you can see, this is brings up a whole entire um, different section, but you can also use this to control your HDR tools. So if you look here, we have that same red indicator and it says fall off. So if we crank that all the way up, it shows you that this is how much will, of your adjustments will affect into the black zone. Now, if you click on black right here, that's this section right there. Now, if we crank this fall off up, it's gonna go above. You can adjust what, what range these different sections um, effect so we can bring our blacks way up if we wanted or we could bring them way down we could do the same with our darks or our shadows lights highlights speculars obviously speculars we have don't really have much for speculars in this so it's not going to be affecting anything we kind of end it right here at highlights and again we can control the fall off right here how much we want that for me i always want to bring my fall off on my highlights up to as much as i can and then we can adjust where these highlights are affecting our image and i'm going to leave it right there so this is super super cool you can actually create new zones as well if you go right here you could create a zone name it whatever you want so that way you can have a special zone that you know or customized for whatever image you are working with. I don't personally use this graph too much. I do everything pretty much in the uh, color wheels side of the things, side of things. We're gonna reset everything. And I let's go up over here to our highlights. Let's see what this is affecting. As we can see, our highlights are the big spotlight and a little bit of the crowd. So I wanna bring that exposure down. I want to bring that exposure down just a little bit and then I want to warm it up. And as you can tell, we're just affecting the spotlight. Now, if we go to our light, let's see what this is affecting. Now that's like our whole entire image. So what I want to do here is I want to bring it down maybe a little bit or let's bring up the lights to here and let's warm that up as well. And let's check our shadows. We want to drop the exposure of our shadows. Just ever so slightly. And I want to actually bring some blues, maybe even some more tealish greens. Very, very subtle into that. And one thing we did forget to do, so if we turn off our look by just holding Control D, let's go back to the color and balance. And let's add, go back to our normal log primary wheels. And let's add a little bit of saturation to this image. And right about there, I'm happy. So we'll go back to the look, Command D. And I'm actually super happy with how this looks. If we go Control D, that is the difference of just using the HDR wheels. It is amazing what these things can do. So they're a super powerful tool. Just go through your images. You can open, like really just open up your image if you really wanted to and really compress it and uh, make it real contrasty if you really want as well. The power of these HDR uh, wheels 
are absolutely incredible and I use them every single time I uh, color grade an image now. So now if we go over here to the color warper node and we can come to this little tool right here, it says color warper, select it. And here we go. I absolutely love this. This is kind of like a new way to adjust the hues, saturations, and the luminances kind of like all in one. So to kind of give you a quick rundown is if you just select, let's just say these greens, if you notice on our color warper, it selects the greens in the color warper, we can drag it up or down and change the hue to a blue. We can bring all the way to the orange. I mean, there's the, what we can do with this is absolutely endless. This is a good way to change different hues. I want to select this blue, this chair right here in the bottom left. I can select that blue and change what that blue is. Let's make it more of a teal just because who doesn't like a little bit of a teal and orange look. Now if you, so now we know that this is what we grabbed. We can move it in our color warper and we can bring it closer to the center, which is gonna desaturate it. You can bring it out, which will make it more saturated, anything you want. And now we come over to the toolbar side of this color warper and this is really cool. So if you want, you can select this little magic wand looking thing. This would be your draw selection. You can literally just draw an area on, on the wheel, the color wheel here that you wanna select and adjust. And then you come back to your little pointer and now we can move this whole entire section that we selected. So this thing is pretty powerful. As you can see, like the changes being made in here are unreal. So let's reset this. All right, so another thing you can do to control the color warpers, if you come down here, you got these two little buttons here. You select select this one right here, and this will be a whole column that you can move. So if you just come over there, select the pin you want, select the column, and now that whole entire column is selected, and you can move that column. Now, you can do the same thing with this one right here, the ring. So if you select, let's say we select this little pin there, hit the ring. Now that whole entire outer ring has been selected and you can move and adjust as needed. So I don't use this a whole lot. I, uh, if I wanna like change my greens to uh, orange or something similar to that, I might adjust it that way or my blues to teals. So for example, if I wanna grab this blue and we'll select that column. Let's make that a little bit more teal maybe. And if you look at our chair down here, everything's kind of turning more teal. I might do something like that and it might be a really good way to make your te your blues a little bit more teal. So that's a good way to do things like that as well. I don't utilize, like I said, I don't utilize this too much, but I think it is a very powerful tool for people who li like to manipulate uh, different hues of colors and if you come over here to this little tab here the chroma slash luma it's a whole nother ball game so it's kind of the same thing but this is going to adjust your luminance and your uh, your chroma here so if you grab let's say we hit this little pin here and you bring it down as you can see our greens are getting darker so this I use to control my exposure from time to time. If I want my greens to be real dark, we can come down and the same thing as in the other grid is if we grab this, we can draw all the way across and we can now control this whole column. And we can darken, we can brighten, we can more, make more green, more magenta. This whole entire grid system and change like color warper system is super super powerful so like i said you if you grab down here and grab this little column we can select this whole thing click that now that selects this whole entire column and now we can like make our image darker and we can make it brighter and this will be very this is a good way to like control your highlights like make your orange like make this orange brighter make the warm it more warm or make it cooler. It's a cool way to control it. I'm gonna make it a little bit brighter and a little bit more warm and we can just leave it just like that. So that's kind of how I utilize that color warper. Let's just go in and add a little bit of a vignette really quick just so we can finish this grade off. 
zoom out here just like that just like that bring that in make sure we hit this little box invert come over here and let's just darken that boom just like that we got a, ourselves a little vignette we'll go up to noise reduction for those who have the full version of DaVinci Resolve we're adding our noise reduction if you don't have the full version of DaVinci Resolve I suggest you guys look into getting that because it is a game changer and I mean if we zoom in real tight on this I'm gonna turn this off and turn it on I mean if you look real close all of these nasty like reds and blues like in the shadows here and you just turn it on it just cleans your image up so much and makes it look so good and another thing I love to do on my images is add in some film grain it's huge I love adding in film grain you can get overlays all over the internet that you can buy and purchase or even probably find free ones online on YouTube but I love DaVinci Resolve's uh, film grain that it comes stock with I always do 35 millimeter 200t or 300t crank up that grain size and that would be my completely graded image right there so that is kind of how I utilize the new color warper and the HDR tools we uh, went over this magic mask in a previous tutorial and I'll link it so make sure you guys check out the description below and um, one of these I'll link it in a card up top I love these HDR tools they've completely changed the way I color grade and if you can learn how to utilize these and find ways to implement them in your color grade I can guarantee you that it will bring your color grades to the next level but let's just break this down uh, one note at a time what we did so first we did our exposure we did our color and balance this is where we created our look and that's where we use this is the node that we utilized the uh, the HDR tools I mean if we just turn that off and turn that on I mean look at the difference I mean absolutely took our grade to a completely different level I mean very subtle changes in there and look at that already just awesome now let's go here to the color warper we made our highlights a little bit more of that golden brightened them up add that vignette add that grain and there you go we have a, a color graded image I'd be super happy with this all right guys so that is the new color tab within DaVinci Resolve 17 it is amazing all of the new features are absolutely awesome and they have really improved the whole entire just coloring suite of DaVinci which I already didn't think was possible but black magic just blows my mind and just keeps making things better and better so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial let me know what you think down in the comments below comment anything else that you would like to see about anything with DaVinci Resolve 17 or just DaVinci Resolve in general thank you for following along thank you for those who are, are subscribing if you're not subscribed make sure you hit that subscribe button because we got some really cool things coming and you don't want to miss out so thank you to everyone I'm going to catch you in the next one